And welcome back to News On. We want to continue our discussion now with our panel. Uh, three, three's a charm. Joining us now, CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo, attorney and Democratic strategist Ken Altshuler, and former Obama campaign director, easy for me to say, and mayoral candidate for Tucker, Georgia, Robin Byro. So uh, right before the break, uh, we were trying to dissect a lot of information, but uh, you brought this up, Ken, um, talking about Trump and prisoner swaps. Well, uh, the new Taliban government is comprised of former Guantanamo Bay detainees, four, uh, in fact, uh, who were released in a prisoner swap back in 2014 for Bo Bergdahl. Uh, interesting enough, he was trying to get his conviction overturned about three weeks ago. That didn't happen. Uh, and now they are the leaders of this new uh, government. So, uh, Robin, you know, how concerned are you to see uh, these, <laughs> these members now uh, leading the charge again when we still have Americans uh, there and I do think going to Melissa's point I think that is still on the top of minds of many of Americans in this country but Ken says you know ultimately that this is going to kind of fade into the dust I'm paraphrasing what you're saying but ultimately Americans are focusing more on domestic issues so as someone who is a Democrat who worked to get Obama elected what are your thoughts <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here uh for one thing, the, the situation in Guantanamo has been going on, 15, it was 15 years this past Monday that these prisoners uh, have been there awaiting trial. Uh, this is a broken system. This is not the fault of the judges nor the prosecutors. This is a failed system. Uh, look at how many presidents have, have had a hand in this. This doesn't even have anything to do with them. It's a broken system. Uh, but I recoil and cringe every time I hear the name Bo Bergdahl. Uh, because I worked on that as an Army Ranger veteran, um, and, and the, the the amount of lives lost trying to recapture that one soldier who wandered off base uh, and went rogue uh, is it's it's it hurts my soul. Um, but I even worse than that, I am concerned about the estimated 100 to 200 people, possibly even more than that, that are left behind in Afghanistan that may have been uh, interpreters, that may have been Afghans helping us. Um, and yes, there are some dual citizen persons who are residents of, of Afghanistan and the United States at the same time. I'm concerned for their safety and well-being because we don't have military forces right there now to protect them from the military. So it's concerning and I have I take great issue with that. I interviewed someone who works directly evacuating them. It's on my podcast. It's www.namericandiscourse. The broadcast is the end of an error. Check it out. It's got great information in there. It was very informative. be honest with you, you know, I think Americans are more concerned about what's going to happen in the future. Maybe not three days from now with 9-11, but five months from now, or maybe even 12 months from now, because these people, again, were let loose. And now, again, we don't have any military presence in Afghanistan. And even though that's what the administration decided, this administration and the last administration, you can't imagine the fear that is people still have thinking that something else could happen, that we'd have some other type of terrorist plot. concerns about that. No Americans should be left behind and none of our a Afghan allies should be left behind. I helped train them to fight and defend themselves. So this is a serious issue, whether it's 100, 200 or 400 or more. We've got to get these people home safely because they helped us in the in the war on terror. It's it, we have a responsibility to them. I think the problem is, though, why did the administration leave on the 31st? Actually, they left the day before the 31st. They left the 30th. They were gone by August 30th. Why? Why did they hold fast to that date? Why didn't they just wait till they got everybody out? It would have been a heck of a lot easier to do that rather than to try to get back and get people in or have the possibility of hostages. Why did they do that? It boggles the mind. Nobody, nobody understands why they left people there. Give me an explanation why Biden would do that. Melissa, I can answer that question because the Taliban were control after May. It's You're assuming that they had the freedom to say we're going to wait till September or October. And I'm not talking about Joe Biden reversing Donald Trump's policy. I'm saying that after May 1st, the Taliban had control of the country and had control of the deadline. And they were not going to allow us to have a longer period of time. That's the problem. And by the way, part of those 5,000 prisoners that Donald Trump let out, 
helped take over Kabul. So they were part and parcel of the takeover of the country. So I think that when we talk about seeing Gitmo figures in a hardline Afghani government, which is going to be a disaster, that is part of prisoner exchange. And if we want to get people back, sometimes this is a necessary evil. Not makes me doesn't make me happy. But but it's not Joe Biden's fault that he was between a rock and a hard place on that time deadline. But there are still Americans there. Place because I mean we're the most powerful military in the world. What do you mean we didn't have the freedom to do it? We yes we do. We're the most powerful military in the world. Period. Full stop. If we yeah. wanted to get our people out in the time frame that we set, then we did it. Biden already changed the time frame. Trump said May. Biden pushed it back to August. Biden push, could have pushed it back until October, November. He could have done that. We're the most powerful military and country in the world. If you want to send in twenty thousand troops to do so. Yes, right. but that's what it would have taken. And you can't do it. And America would not have stood for 20,000 troops <laughs> back in Afghanistan in September. Wouldn't have happened. Robin. It's true. We would have had to have sent in more troops. It would have needed at least 20,000 probably honestly up to a hundred thousand because of what was happening with proliferation there we, the, the equipment but that Robin, we are seeing why wouldn't we get them out beforehand and again woulda coulda shoulda but why didn't we get them out beforehand before we did the withdrawal i mean that's that's what makes sense to everybody right and, and that is what we negotiated with the taliban look i took issue with president trump when he when he invited members of the taliban to camp david january 2018 to negotiate this with them because i don't trust the taliban at their word uh we gave them our word that we would we would get out by this date it was extended by three months uh that's not enough time we did i want to give credit though where credit is due miranda it's important that we recognize that we did evacuate, I believe, 127,000 people within a couple week period. Uh, and it was with a massive effort, not just with the government and a state department, but with volunteer forces. They should all be applauded. They are heroes and they're not getting But it was, a, was it an effort that should, <clears throat> excuse me, but wasn't it an effort that would it, shouldn't have happened? I think that's the argument that a lot of people are making, that it sure. should have and happened it was before really the it was just but we are running out of time, and and we still have Americans there, and we're going to continue to follow that. But real quickly, in the one and a half minutes that we have remaining, and I apologize that I'm kind of losing my voice here, but I'll get it back. You guys are doing great. Uh, you don't even need me. <clears throat> but real quickly, <laughs> we yes, mentioned 9/11 is approaching. Melissa, 49% um, of Americans see the U.S. as safer from terrorism than it was before the terrorist attacks in 2001. That is down from 64% a decade ago. How do you feel, real quickly? I want each of you to respond, so 20 seconds to you. I, I think that people are concerned about what happened in the last month. I'd say before the last month in the withdrawal in Afghanistan, before the 13 people were killed, before this happened, I think people would have felt safer, but now I'm not so sure. Ken. I actually agree with Melissa. I think that the fact that the Taliban are now in control and can shield Al Qaeda and more terrorist attacks are possible, people feel a little less secure as I do. But I think in the end, I think our security is much improved. So is our intelligence. Robin. Things have changed. Cybersecurity is the new threat that we all need to be concerned about uh, right now, uh, that it, it has a much greater effect on your day-to-day -day life. But the Americans are still concerned about the Taliban and what happens in Afghanistan. Yeah, we've been talking to a number of people. That's been the question we've had up for the last week. Thank you so much, panel, for bearing with me and my loss of vocal cords today, but I really do appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thanks. That was fun. <clears throat> All right. Hopefully when we come back, so will my voice. Uh, coming up, we're going to have an update on your weather with Weather Nation. We'll be right back. You're watching News On.